Hi everyone, it's Adam again. Welcome to lap three for the hardware portion. Today we're gonna to walk you through what to do for the hardware portion. So it's very simple. Um, the circuit's already constructed for you on your remote desktop. So make sure you're going to see you learn, um, navigating to the remote desktop site, seeing what computers are available, making sure yours is available, downloading the connection for your particular station. So say I was on station 10, I would download this particular remote desktop and log in that way. Once you've done that, I also want to draw your attention to this basic breadboard schematic. So there's power rails, like we like to call them, that run this way. And those are all connected vertically along this line here, okay? And these are connection rails, and they run um, adjacent to those, I guess I would say. And they only actually involve five pins per node, right, as you can see. So if I connected a resistor between here and here, what would happen is the resistor would be shorted, right? Because there would be an easier path for it to flow underneath. But if I was, if I was to connect a resistor between here and here, that resistor would actually be connected properly. So now that you know the basic schematic for a breadboard, I want to go back to the lab manual and show you your first job. So your first job is to examine the circuit on the breadboard and figure out the connections that are present by looking at the camera. So to draw the schematic um, of what you see. So I need you to draw an electrical schematic of what's on the camera based on this kind of photo here, which shows the basic function functionality of a breadboard. So I'll give you a couple hints while we're here. Um, this is the AC output, which is actually a transformer output, and it has a positive and a negative rail, right? So the positive rail is coming into this set of rails here, where, where the red line is at the back. And then this blue rail here is coming in to, sorry, this black rail is coming into where the blue line runs all along the board there, okay? So this is your ground point, and this is your positive point here, okay? This here is a resistor, that component. This here is a 1N4006 diode. And this here is a capacitor. So I will give you the value of the capacitor in the lab manual, and then I'll ask you to calculate the RC constant um, by using the scope. And this scope channel here is scope channel two, and it's measuring across the load. So it's measuring from one side of this lamp to the other side, which is connected to the ground rail here, right? So go ahead, draw your schematic of what you think you see there. Once you're done that, I want you to head back to the lab manual quickly. And basically, we're looking at a steady state analysis for a capacitor. But at the same time, um, we're inputting a 60 hertz signal, right, from the AC generator here. So it's not actually going to be tau equals RC it's more tau equals zc because we were working with the impedance of the capacitor rather than the um, capacitance. But for all intents and purposes, we'll just consider uh, this particular experiment to be a steady state experiment. And we'll do our measurements as if it was. So let's go ahead and navigate back to the remote desktop. Make sure you're opening your scope by going into properties right clicking on the link and opening it in Chrome or Firefox. It doesn't open well in Edge, so I would always suggest you do this. From there, you're gonna see your scope and then you can connect your remote front panel. If you already have another session open, it won't allow you to log in. As you can see, I already have one panel open, so it wouldn't allow me to log in. From there, you're gonna see all these waves on your screen. Uh, what you're really interested in is the waveform that's doing this type of motion. So it goes up and then it discharges like a capacitor would. And then you're going to look at the actual peak to peak value that you find. So in my case, I found around 12.8 volts was my peak to peak value. So from there, I went and calculated uh, 0 0.37 multiplied by that to give me the value that I need to set my marker to. Um, to know I'm at the 37% uh, point, which is approximately equal to the time at one tap. 
So make sure you go to the measure button, hit measure, type, you can say peak to peak is fine. And you want to make sure that measurement is placed on channel two or whatever channel your particular uh, capacitor is on. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and back and then the measurement should show up right there. And even if you wanted to get just a single um, snapshot of this waveform, you could do that just by hitting single here. That'll actually stabilize your values so you can play around with some things. That might actually help. So once you've found that point, I want you to go ahead and put on your cursors, right? And you want both for vertical and horizontal cursors, and you want them to be on, again, the same channel that we're interested in here. So once those are set up, should have three, four, and one and two. And from there, you can actually place channel three or channel four, whatever one you choose, on that point uh, that you calculated. So in my case, it's around 4.75 volts, and it should be the same for you guys here. Once that spot is actually marked, then you're gonna go ahead and place one marker um, adjacent to it, so where where the vertical marker runs through the horizontal marker, that's where you're gonna place that. And then you're gonna place your first marker right on the actual peak, um, peak voltage. So you can go ahead and look for the highest value here. And it looks like it's probably approximately there. So once you have that, then you have a time difference between uh, one and two, right? And using this delta T, we can calculate our tau. Well, that is our tau, actually, sorry. With that time difference, and with the value of the capacitor given in the data sheet, or sorry, the lab manual of 100 microfarads, we can actually do tau divided by C to find an estimated value for our load. So you have the time difference, right? In my case is 6.29 milliseconds. And then I can do that um, tau equals r times c, right? So I can do tau divided by the capacitance value of 100 microfarads, which was given in the data sheet. And I find that my equivalent resistance that is seen is approximately 62 Point nine ohms but if we go back to the actual camera we can see that there's a capacitor in here right and like I was saying before this capacitor is actually um, an impedance when it's running in AC so the one thing we can do is actually subtract the capacitors impedance from the value that we just found to actually come up with our value for the load. So again, my resistance that I just found for the whole circuit approximately was 63 ohms. And then I'm going to quickly calculate the impedance of the capacitor, knowing that I have a 60 hertz signal coming in here, right? Because it's just a wall signal. So it's at 60 hertz times two pi. And then that will all be multiplied by the 100 microfarads, right? And then it's one over that to give us the impedance of the capacitor. So once we have that, I find that the impedance of my capacitor is approximately 26.52 ohms. Because a capacitor in parallel works like a resistor in series, we can just add and subtract that resistance. So if we go 62.9 or 63 ohms minus the 1 over 60 times 2 pi times uh, 100 microfarads will find that, well I find exactly that my resistance of the load is approximately 36 ohms. And that makes sense. Uh, the actual value for the load here in this particular case is we're using a 12 ohm resistor with about an 8 ohm lamp here. So it's about 20 ohms. So 36 ohms is, is within the measure of tolerance. It, it's good enough.
again, it's not the best calculation because we're uh, considering this a steady state model when it really uses impotences. But um, for all intents and purposes, this is still a, a very good way of viewing the RC constant. So again, three steps. Make sure you're measuring the peak-to-peak -peak voltage on the capacitor waveform. Then make sure you're setting the one marker down to the 0 0.37 point. And then make sure you're actually setting the one horizontal marker to match up with that point. And then you're going to set the other horizontal marker to match up with the peak of the capacitive, wave, capacitive waveform. And then from there, you're going to measure the time difference between the two. That gives you tau. With tau, you can divide that by the capacitance value to get an estimated value for the total, total load that this whole circuit sees here. And then from there, you can actually calculate the impedance of the capacitor, which is just this particular element here, the blue element. And then you can subtract the impedance of the capacitor from the, uh, the total impedance that you just found in the previous section. And you can come up with an estimated value for the load, which I found was approximately 36 ohms in my case. So I hope that procedure makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, just let me know. I'll be happy to take your questions. All right, good luck. Bye-bye.